Well, it was uh, six practice, and tomorrow we'll have off, so we we'll kind of finish the first week, and, and uh, I think we got a pretty good jump on what to do, and now we got to spend a lot of our time on uh, how to do it and, and go. So, but it's been, I like the kids' energy. They've been fun, and uh, you know, kind of take advantage of the rest of the day, the off day, and, and come back whatever the next day is and, and come back at it. They've been fun. Only when I'm talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what could make him a good receiver if you guys end up going that direction? Yeah, I mean, DT's a really good football player. But uh, right now, I think he's got a chance to be really special at corner and want him focusing on that. What do you think you guys got out of having Lou Holtz come in and talk to your team? What do you think you got out of that? What was it, you know, obviously a, a guy that's been around the game and, and uh, and certainly there's a lot of the I think philosophical uh, foundational pieces that that coach Alvarez got from him and, and I certainly have gotten from coach Alvarez and and so the you know anytime you hear someone speak about the game and, and approach and really it's you know the game is the game is a vehicle we can use to teach and, and help these Young guys grow, and, and uh, it was it was it was good. Good message. What has stood out since Natrell transitioned to safety, and, and maybe the role he's taken in calling out plays? Have you seen him progress in that area in the spring? Yeah, I mean, I think you know Natrell's. He's a really, I think he's a really talented football player. I think he's a, a guy that cares a ton about this team, and and I think. You know, it kind of mirrors his development as a football player, mirrors his development as as a person. You know, I mean, he's maturing, he's getting more vocal, and, you know, Trell's, uh, Trell's fun to be around, and you respect, you know, all that he does and how he does it. And, um, you know, I think his growth at safety, you know, it's, it's one more thing. He does it, he's done a lot of things being here, and, and it's one more one more piece that, that he's adding value to the team. I'm excited for Trell on this year. Paul, I know there's 11 guys on the kickoff coverage unit, but how valuable was, it, was what Rosowski did last year for you guys in terms of oh, setting up your defense? Yeah, PJ was, you know, it was, uh, he was a significant impact on you. And I think, you know, I mean, this year won't be much different. We went up against some really dangerous, we felt talented, great returners. and. PJ put ball in the end zone, you know, 69% of the time with touchbacks. That's a, that's huge, and, and so it'll be fun. You know, he's still gotta keep growing and keep developing. But, but he was uh, he was really good last year, and and needed to be that and and, and, and better this year. Paul, uh, what's impressed you about Bradrick and Chris and the way they're competing this this camp? Well, I think you know Bradrick, Chris. I think the room's a good room. I think Taiwan's come in and done a really nice job and. I think, you know, certainly when you go through kind of an off-season surgery, missed a lot, you know, missed all of spring, winter conditioning. I think it's, he's feeling good just to be healthy, and he's been battling through that. And, and I think, you know, Bradrick's got some experience, and, and Chris, you know, his journey's been a little bit different, and, and they, they just got to stay focused and, and, and work, and they've got to own the details. I think that's the biggest thing, but I like the, the way the group's working. To your eye. The surgery that Taiwan had is he, is he quicker now, more explosive? I mean, I'm assuming that was the point. Yeah, I, I think he's healthy. You know, so I don't know if we were able to get a real okay. accurate gauge on that. Okay. And because um, yeah, there's been some times, and I think he's lost a little bit of weight. Okay. You know, so the combination, um, and and he's still, you know, the first part of summer he wasn't kind of fully cleared. So uh, he, he does to me looks faster quicker than any time that I've been with him. And I think it's probably because of his health and now you can knock on wood and, and hope it, it stays that way. Do you like the idea of having a defined number one running back number two or, or is it good for guys if there is a chance that they could get even? Yeah, I, th I think the biggest thing is, you know, they've got to earn the right to be able to play. And, um, 
I mean, you, you want to have one good back, and then you want to have two good backs, and then you want to have three good backs, right? And so I think the competition, it's not any different than like last year we are talking about the quarterback. I think the competition's with themselves and being the best player you can be and, and owning, owning that spot. Have you seen either of the backup quarterbacks separate from one another at this point? I know it's still early. Yeah, no. Um, really wanted them early, especially this first week, focus on kind of the installation, the playbook, and, and next next couple weeks now we can kind of to be less putting in plays and more focusing on trying to play the game, play it the right way. And, and you know, for, for both of them, Gray missed last spring. So they've just had a spring and, and really this fall camp. So it's, it's early in their, in their uh, development. What do you feel like is different about Alex uh, this camp than maybe the last year this time? I think that there's obvious differences in that he's played some. He's got a better idea of why we're doing what we're doing both schematically and practice wise and uh, but he's to me he's still the same person you know just a little bit older.